welcome, 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 welcome this Saturday morning or afternoon for some of you. Um, let's go ahead and get signed in. The only people that receive your certificate is if you are here live. So if you're here live, you can go ahead and get signed in. But we are going to go ahead and move on. I am Dr. Desiree Alexander, and I am your host for today. I'm the founder CEO of Educator Alexander Consulting, and I'm happy to have you with us. These are all the ways that you can contact me. Moving on, because I want to go through this very quickly. And the reason why I go through this so quickly is because all of these events are at edalex.net slash events. So you can get more information there. So we do have a Tech You Can Do series going on. Next week will be Google Slides and Google Forms. Two hours of Google training each for free. We also have the um, Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion in Library Community session coming up, presented by the media singer, Maven. So that should be a really, really good one. And then the date changed for classroom management and beyond. I did this session last July, and it was so popular, I brought it on back. But it changed from July, whatever it was, to August 1st. So just keep that in mind. You can also sign up for misinformation in the information age. I'm so tired of people sharing stuff that's not true. So there you go. And then we have templates for teachers coming up as well. And this is really cool. Like if you want templates that you can use, like I don't want to create it. Do you have it? This is going to be an a, a on fire session. So there you go. We also, um, I'm promoting a summer camp by Kids Academy. Um, this summer camp is free for educators. For parents, it's $20, and it is for pre-K through third grade. So it's a virtual summer camp, um, pre-K through third grade. Teachers get 60 days free to the product, and that includes the summer camp. So you can definitely look into that. I think it starts in July, July 1st. The Rethink Learning Summit. I will be there um, doing live sessions, and I'll be doing recorded sessions as well. So a really cool summit. It is paid um, for you to um, rethink how we're doing things in education. Next, I have some sessions with BER on distance learning, and one is distance learning through ELA, the ELA classroom. So some other cool sessions. Ed, change. Global 24-hour learning, teaching, conference. Um, it's not just about technology. It's about everything. It's 24 hours. We have games. We have prizes. We have uh, just so much stuff. 24-hour inter international conference, completely for free. We've been doing this since 2015. Look into it. The United Ed Tech Conference is all about elevating BIPOC Voices in Ed Tech. So I am a conference host for that, and that is a pay, I think it's $15. And all of that money goes to a, um, a nonprofit for students. And then the Indiana Connected Educators Conference, completely for free, a whole week of sessions. You can look into that. And again, I go through this so quickly because you can find it all at the same spot. All of these things are at the same spot. All I do is just tickle your brain a little bit to tell you to go look at that. We will have an evaluation at the end. Our wonderful, amazing presenter, Tawanga, is doing this completely for free. So please think about doing the evaluation at the end. We do appreciate it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stop sharing. And I'm going to let Tawanga go ahead and start sharing her screen. So we do not need to be on camera. Hello, G. Hey! We do not have to be on camera right now, though. We're going to stop. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, G, he, go ahead and stop your video if you can for me. So we don't need to be on camera right now. But we will. Um, we may be on camera later. So while she's sharing her screen, I want to give a call, a shout out to some places that we have with us. We have Indiana. Tennessee, Texas, Maryland, Louisiana, Texas, Texas, Louisiana, Georgia, the Dominican Republic, we international, y'all, Minnesota, Baton Rouge, Houston, Lake Charles, Louisiana, Washington, Houston, Tennessee, Memphis, Memphis. So we have people from all over here. Thank you for joining us, guys. So I am going up. Oh, New Jersey was like, hold on, boo. Don't forget New <laughs> Jersey. All right. So Jersey's with us, too. So, guys, I'm going to shut my mouth and let Tawana take it away. 
All right. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Sinomite 101. This is my contact information, my email address, and you can follow me at Twitter at CodeSped. Thank you for joining us. I hope everybody had a good breakfast. You got your fingers all warmed up and that you are ready to go. I'm excited. I'm glad everybody's here all the way from Dominican Republic. Wow. Amazing. All right. Let's see here. I didn't click that or something. Let me go back. Okay. So we're going to talk a little bit about American Sign Language, right? That's why everybody's here. American Sign Language, we want to talk about what it is and what it's not. Okay, so for one, it is not a visual form of English. It's not the exact same. It's not the same word order. It is not an equal match for English. It's a completely separate, independent language of its own. It has its own syntax, its own grammar. It's part of a whole culture, right? So that's the first thing we want to know. We got to respect ASL as an independent language. Also, it's not just acting out. Um, it's not miming or like what we do for Pictionary. That is not what ASL, it has its own distinct vocabulary. So there are signs that represent certain words and they have meaning. And the other thing is not a universal language, I'm sorry. It's not a universal language. So if you leave here and go to Korea, they have their own sign language. If you go to Mexico, they have their own sign language. If you go to England, they also have their own sign language. So it's not universal. All of those countries have their own sign language. And I actually, my friend, and she's here, I uh, went to visit her in Korea and she took me to two deaf schools in Korea. So I was able to see how different Korean sign language is as opposed to ASL. So ASL is spoken in USA and Canada. Okay, so why learn ASL? Everybody probably has different reasons why you want to learn. Um, in the chat box, this is going to be interactive, so I want you to talk back. It's not for y'all just to listen to me and look at me. I want to hear from you too. What are some reasons in the chat? Why do you want to learn ASL? Okay. All right, great. So I'm going to come back and look at some of those. Here are a few reasons, um, some cool things about ASL, fun things about ASL. One, if your parents ever told you that you cannot talk with food in your mouth, well, in ASL, you absolutely can, right? Because you're using your hands. So you can definitely talk while you're eating. The other reason, save your vocals for car karaoke. So if you want to preserve that voice and use your hands, you can do that. If you want to keep your kids or your spouse from interrupting your phone calls, I do this all the time. One of the first times I taught my child was wait. <laughs> and it works. Okay, so those are silly, but more fun reasons are to learn a new language, learn a culture, make new friends, and create visual storytelling. If you get a chance and go on YouTube, um, ASL storytelling is amazing. Even if you don't understand everything that's happening, it's pretty amazing to watch, right? And so I'm reading some of the reasons here why y'all wanna learn. This is awesome. Some of you have people who are deaf in the family. Okay, I see some people communicate with nonverbal students. That's great. I'm also a special education teacher, and that's how I use it as well. Even with babies and kids, there's research that you can look at all of that, but it's wonderful um, to help babies and kids when they're upset and they can't communicate what they're trying to say. A lot of times, ASL will help them to kind of work through those, even with babies as young as six months. So it really works, and it's amazing. Okay, great. Great. All right. The components of ASL. He only loves my nuggets. I need somebody to type that in the chat box. He only loves my nuggets. All right. This is your way to remember what the parts of ASL, what parts are, is it made up of. Okay. And so that's an acronym. And the H stands for handshake. So that's what you're actually, the shape of your hands. And you'll learn more about that. 
Orientation is, are your palms pointing upward? Are your palms pointing downward for the, the sign? All of those things add meaning. And then the location of the sign. So for the location is, are you signing near your face? Is it near your body? Is it away from your body? And then your movement. Does the sign have a little wiggle to it? Do you have to repeat the sign? All those things have to do with meaning. And then non-manual expression. So non-manual expression is everything you're doing that you're not signing. So in looking at your face, what kind of face are you making? Because that's just as important that goes along with those signs. So if you're signing about something happy, then it should show on your face. If you're asking a question, then your eyebrows should be a little furrowed. It'll show on your face, right? So those are all the parts that make up ASL. Remember, like we said, it is completely independent language. So remember that. He only loves my nuggets. All right, and this will come to at the end, but these are other resources. You'll get a copy of all this that you can check out later if we don't have enough time. All right, so I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. And I'm gonna come back to you guys. Turn my chat box on. All right. So what we're gonna do now, I'm gonna begin to show y'all a few signs, right? Um, we're gonna try to cover the alphabets, the numbers, colors, family members, and some basic um, introductions if we can, with, for time's sake, okay? I, I still see people typing, he only loves my nuggets. Good, all right, so if you're ready, let me see you type ready in the chat box. We're about to get started. And I told y'all there's going to be a guest presenter. I think I mentioned that earlier, but the guest is actually you. So if you thought this was going to be one of those boring presentations where you just come and listen and look, no, you are going to be helping me to present. So if you're able and you feel comfortable to turn your cameras on, you can do that now. And we're going to get started. We're going to start practicing. That way I can kind of see what you're doing. Look at all those beautiful faces. Good morning, y'all, or good afternoon, depending on where you are. Hello, hello. All right, so you don't need your mics. We're going to use hands. I need to see everybody's hands, and I want everybody to be able to see my hands. Yes, there we go. All right, so good. We're going to start off with alphabets. I see people typing ready, so we're going to go. We're going to start off with the alphabets, okay? Now, alphabets, don't think of it as elementary because in ASL, those hand shapes also have meaning. So for example, this is the letter A. Everybody see that? All right, so this is the letter A. A can also be science. A can also be gas, right? So when you learn hand shapes, you're learning all kinds of other vocabulary that you can use later. I can take the same A shape, stand it up, that's help. Okay, so when you learn alphabets, you're learning all kinds of other useful vocabulary. All right, if you're ready, I'm gonna teach you first time. This is R. Tawanga, can I stop shape. you just for a second? Yes. Um, guys, if you are seeing all the cameras pop up and you can't really see Tawanga because her screen is a little small, what you wanna do is go to speaker view. Oh, yeah. So in the top, in the top right-hand corner, of your Zoom screen, you should see speaker view. So if you're seeing all these little boxes of all the wonderful, pretty faces, if you click speaker view, you'll see Tawanga a little bit bigger when she's speaking. And then you'll see just a couple of the other boxes. So I just wanted to say that just in case Tawanga is getting really small because you're seeing everybody else, click speaker view and you'll see her. Thank you. All right, she's right. So I need to see everybody, but yeah, y'all can just see me. All right, so we're gonna start with our alphabet. So later, A. This A. Good. Okay. B. Good. And you want to try to keep your fingers together. B. Good. C. D. Everything on your thumb. Y'all see that? Good. E. On your thumb. We don't want any screaming E's. Put them on your thumb if you can. Good, and the other thing I wanted to mention, whatever side, uh, your hand is your dominant hand, use that, I'm left-handed, so 
This is me, but if you're right-handed, use your dominant hand. All right, so this is E, F. Good. Good. Okay, Lisa, I can't really see your hand. There you go. Good. All right. Yeah. G. Let's see, turn to the side. I'm going to show you. But it's almost like you're about to give someone a little pinch. G. Thumb and pointer finger. Good. All right. H. Good job. H. I. Pinky's up. Good. J. You make a J with that pinky. J. Good. K. You put your thumb right in between your pointer and your middle finger. Good. K. L. And then M, when you get to M, there's different variations. You take all these three fingers, put them on your thumb. Some people you see they drop them down like this. Some you'll see them pull them straight out. Either way is fine. It's just a variation of the sign. I prefer to poke them out because it makes it easier to read. Okay, but if you see it differently, just know it's not wrong. It's just a different variation. So that's M. So M has three legs, N has two legs. Y'all see that? M, N. Good. All right. O. And then P is just like K, but you point it down. You remember K was thumb in between? Okay. P, you point it down. Good. So it should look like that. Okay. Q. Kind of like G, but point it down. Good. Okay. Good signers. R. You remember that from ready, right? Okay. R. S. Thumb goes across. So a lot of people get A confused with S. It's all about that thumb. So S goes across. Good. T. Put your thumb in between, and that's T. All right, and let me show y'all an example. So, for example, the day of the week, Tuesday, is a T in a circle, like this. If you spin it like this, that's toilet. So you want to make sure <laughs> that if you're speaking about something happening on Tuesday, you're doing this and not this. But you see, it's the same sign. It's just it's about the movement that adds meaning, right? All right, so this is T. So you want to make sure you let them know it's Tuesday, not toilet. T U. Okay, good. V. Good. W. All right, and this is X. It's a little hook. See that? That's X. And Y, good, and you take your pointer finger and draw Z. That's it, that's all the alphabets. That's a deaf clap, good job. All right, so we're gonna practice again one more time really quickly, since I think most of y'all seem like y'all caught on pretty fast. We're gonna go quickly and then we're gonna play a game. Are you ready? Let me see your sign for ready. Good, ready, okay. So here we go. I want to see you signing too. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, 
R S T U V W X Y and Z. Awesome. Y'all did awesome. Okay, so we're going to play a game in the chat box. Um, I'm going to spell the name, just the first name, of an actor. And we'll try to keep it simple. And it's okay if you don't get it. It's okay. It's just practice. But see how many, if you can figure it out. Okay, so I'll give you a hint. This is a very handsome actor. Okay, I'm going to spell it for y'all. And I want you to put the answer in the chat box. Y'all ready? Let me see the sign for ready. Okay, let's go. <laughs> I can see people response when they've gotten it. <laughs> Let me check the chat box. Yes, y'all got it. Idris. So and one thing you want to pay attention to when you're signed, your finger spelling, this is finger spelling. You don't want to bounce. So you don't want that deaf person's head to be going up and down. You want your signing to be slow and steady, right? Okay, good. Y'all did good. All right, let's try another one. You ready? Let me see the sign. Okay. Um, he's a comedian. A Jewish comedian. Good. Y'all saw that? Do it again. And I see it in a chat box. That's right. Adam Sandler. Good. So y'all doing good. All right, let's do another one. Um, let me find a lady. Okay, here we go. Famous actress. Ready? She's a lady. Oh, I think I just spelled her name wrong. Let me do it again. <laughs> okay. I see it in the chat box. And somebody even caught the one that I misspelled. Good job. Good job. Julia. So that was Julia. Julia Roberts. Good. All right. We'll do one more, then we'll move on to numbers. Um, Ooh, let me give y'all a hard one. See if y'all ready for this. He's also an actor, very handsome, very talented. Okay, here we go. This one's a little longer. I see someone's got it. Good job, Bridget. I'm seeing it, good. Did y'all see that one? That was a little longer, that's Channing. I'm seeing it. Channing Tatum is one of my favorites. Good, and I chose his name because I wanted you to see when you have a double letter, you just slide it. So Channing, C-H-A-N-N. I-N-G. So some people may just give it a little bounce, but you can just slide it. Channing. Good. Okay. Y'all doing great. So we're going to move on to numbers. All right. This is the sign for numbers. Like a little kiss. That's numbers. Uh, can you see my face? 
All right. So one thing well, before we start that when you're practicing and you're remember what we said, the ASL is another it's a language. So for people who are deaf, they do not see their deafness as a sickness or a disability. Right. So it's part of their cultural identity. Like I am cute, chubby and black. That's part of my identity. Right. So for a deaf person, being deaf is part of who they are. So it's not like, oh, how long have you been deaf? Oh, I'm so sorry. Don't do that. <laughs> it's a part of who they are. It's a part of their culture, and they're very proud. Some of them have gone to deaf universities. There's one in D.C., um, Gallaudet University. It's the only one that's a historically deaf college, and I'm going to give you all more information about that because they have a free ASO class. But give them that same respect that is part of their identity. So they don't want your sympathy but they are more than willing to teach you. And even if you make mistakes, I've made so many, so many. And I think most of us on here are over 18, but I've been trying to sign and tell people that I was hungry and I'm signing like inappropriate stuff with church folks. But they, you know, they pull me aside and tell me, babe, that's not, that's not the sign for hungry. That with the motion, repeating stuff, you got to be careful, but they will teach you. So if you make a mistake, <laughs> someone, We'll show you the right way. But remember that it is an actual language. They have a culture. So for us, when you're first starting to sign, your inclination is to watch people's hands because you don't want to miss anything. And that's normal. But for a deaf person, they're going to look in your eyes. They're not looking at your hand. They're catching what you're signing, but they're looking in your eyes because I'm saying what I said, the non-manual expression. So what you're doing with your face, they're watching your face. They're watching your eyes. Okay, so we want to remember that. So deaf uh, community does not think that they have a disability. They don't call it that. Um, and they also want us to be accepting of their culture, to believe they can do anything. So if that person is deaf and they have um, an interpreter, do not look at the interpreter when you're talking to them. So even if you're not to the point where you can communicate, if they have an interpreter, you look at them, the person you're speaking to, and let the interpreter do their job. But you don't want to, you know, step over that person and look at, you're giving the interpreter more power when you look at them. So we don't want to do that. Okay. All right. Y'all ready? Let me see my signs. We're ready. Let's go. Numbers. We're going to do one to 10. We'll see. We'll do one to 10. All right. So numbers are like this. Some, you may see people hold it uh, palm forward or palm backwards. It's just a variation of the sign. Either one is fine. Okay, so here we go. One, two, three. Okay, does anybody, can you tell me in the chat, why do you think we do three this way and not like this? Why do y'all think? Good, I'm seeing it. Because this is W, right? Y'all remember that's W. So the number three is like this. Okay, good. And even for the numbers, those signs also have other meanings. If I take this three, put it down, that's parking, right? So even though you're learning numbers, all of those signs also have other meanings. That's park it. No parking on dance floor, park it. All right, so that's three. <laughs> this is number three, four, five. For six, we turn it around. And give a little tap. Six, seven, eight, nine. And what does nine also look like? Tell me in the chat. Mm -hmm. Nine is also the letter F. So in order to know the difference, it's going to be all about context. Context. So we're talking about, oh, there's nine football players out with you'll know from the context that they're talking about the number nine and not the letter f all right so this is nine ten is a thumbs up with a little wiggle all right and same thing this is the sign for ten if i lift it up that's help right point it down that's science same sign right it's a lot of different signs you can use with that all right let's do it again ready One, two, 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Awesome. Awesome job. All right, so now we're gonna combine. I wanna see you sign. Um, let's see, Alicia, can you sign the number seven? Good, seven. All right, Kathleen, can you show me the number six? Close. Yep, go to your pinky. Good, six. All right, Danielle, what's the number nine? Perfect, perfect. All right, um, Paula, what's 10? Great. Bridget, what's the number four? Perfect. Oh, we have two Lisas, huh? Oh, no, Alicia. Lisa, can you show me the number three? Perfect. Three. All right. Jessica, what is two? Good. And Danielle, can you show us the number one? Perfect. All right. Good, guys. So remember that. We don't want, your, you don't want to be bouncing. Keep your hands steady. Use your dominant hand. Y'all are doing amazing. All right, we're going to move on. So we've done letters, we've done numbers, we're going to do colors. This is designed for colors. I always think of Cindy Lauper. They're true colors. So on your chin, with your dominant hand, so <laughs> if you're right handed, it's here. Or on my left, these it's here. That's the sign for colors. Beautiful colors. All right, so we're going to start with pink. Pink, you're going to use the letter P. Y'all remember that? See, all those letters are coming back. Good. And it's on your lips. Pink. Pink, right down the front of your lip. One time. All right. And red is your pointer finger, right down the front of the lips. Same thing. Pink. And another interesting fact, most of the rude offensive signs are off the nose. So usually you don't, you're not signing anything on your nose unless you're being rude. Are, you know, that's just interesting facts. But most of those signs, if there's, I mean, there's some curse words that are not, but most of the root ones, they're on the nose. Okay. All right. So we did pink, we did red, blue is our B hand. There's that letter. See, I told you all those alphabets are back. And you just give it a little twist. That's blue. All right. So if this is blue, what do you think this would be with a P? Purple, good, blue and purple. Use the G and that's green and give it a little shape. Okay, that's blue, green, we've done red. Take your B hand and right down the side of your face is brown. 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 You can do B for brown, T for tan. Take your pointer finger across the eyebrows. It's black. Black. All right, did I miss any? Oh, orange. So take your O and you're going to squeeze it in front of your mouth. That's orange. Okay, let me make sure I'm not missing anything in the chat. Okay. Oh, white, white. White is kind of like you're just throwing it on your chest. Can you see that? You don't actually touch it, you just throw it. White. And gray, there's some different signs for gray. Um, gray can also be the G across the, the eyebrows, but there's some variations on that that sign so and when i say variations it means just like with english like in, in louisiana we have some words that we use that are a little different um gray can be one of those okay yellow is with a y and you give it a little shape yellow 
Okay, so what I want us to do, we're going to practice those one more time, and then I want y'all to tell me what your favorite color is. So first, let's go through the colors one more time, and then you tell me what your favorite. All right, let's see. I'm going to change my view here. Okay, so we're going to start. I can't see myself anymore. There we go. All right, so we're going to start again. So this is brown on the face brown keep that same blue hand the b hand i'm sorry that's blue and we have yellow with a y yellow give it a little shape we have g hand for green okay pointer finger on the lips is red Key is pink, white, throw it on your chest, white, black, or gray, a G. Good. Good. Okay. So I want y'all to show me, um, Leslie, what is your favorite color? Is it purple? Okay, so purple's with the P. I'm sorry, not on the lips. Shake it. It's orange? Okay. Oh, like squeezing the orange right in front of your mouth. Good. All right, so Leslie's favorite color is orange. What about you, Katrina? What's your favorite color? Green. Good. Good job. Kathleen, what's your favorite? Red. Kathleen likes red. Bridget? Blue, I'm not surprised. Blue is her favorite color. <laughs> okay, Jeehee, what's your favorite? Green? Oh, gray. Gray, nope. Green? Okay, green. Gotcha. All right, Elena, what's your favorite color? Red. Okay, good. Alicia, also red. Okay, a lot of reds. Mariah, what's your favorite color? Gray. She likes gray. Okay. Paula, what's your favorite? The purple? Okay. See your hand. Purple. Good. Gloria, what's your favorite color? I can see your hand. It's green. All right. Good. Jessica. Purple. Okay. Alexis, what's your favorite? Black. Okay. Danielle. Purple. Another purple. Lisa, what's your favorite? Blue. All right. And Danielle. Another blue. Good job. All right, good. So you've learned alphabets. The reason for those blues. Oh, I, is it all those Zetas in here? Uh-huh. I knew it. I knew it. All the blues. Got all these Greek in here. Zetas and AKAs. I see y'all. All right. So we've done alphabets. We've done numbers. We've done colors. Are y'all ready for family? We've got enough time. Y'all are such fast learners, like you're going through this. Now, I see those signs. All right, so we're going for family. Let me see your F hands, two Fs. And you're gonna make a big group, a circle. You see that? Start off with my palm, palms pointed forward, outward, and make a circle. That's family. Okay, this is also how you do all of the group signs. So if I wanted to sign group, I would use a G. Group. See that? With a G, that's group. All right. Organization with an O. Same sign. Y'all see that? All right. So that's family. We're moving to family members. 
All right, here we go. This is mother. All of your female signs are on the chin. Think of like the ladies with the little bonnets. All your female signs are here at the chin and the male signs are up here. Okay, so this is mother, this is father. All right, so what do you think this means? Type it in the chat box. Parents, good. So your mother, your father. All right, and we talked about motion and movement. So if this is mother, this is grandmother. So it's like generations of mothers, okay? Same sign, just adding a movement to it. That's mother, grandmother, grandfather, okay? All right, and we're gonna do, okay, so this is boy, like you're tipping the hat, it's boy. Girl, you're gonna take your thumb and right under the chin, girl, okay? So if your son, there's two variations to that sign. You can sign boy, baby. Y'all see that? So boy, and like you're holding a baby. But sometimes you may see people just touch the head. It's the same thing. So either of those are fine. A sign here, you know it's a male. So that's your son, your male baby. The girl baby dot is your daughter. So my son and your daughter. Good. All right, sister. So sister will be girl. And then you're going to take two index fingers and tap it one time. That's your sister. So that basically means girl, same, right? Girl, same. Y'all see that? Give it a little tap. I'm just showing y'all from the side. That's your sister, okay? Brother could just be from here, there, or they might sign boy, same, okay? So girl, same, their sister, brother, same signs, girl. All right, and then you have uncle. So that's a U, remember all those alphabets? And just give it a little shake, that's your uncle. All right, so what do you think aunt would be? Show me what y'all think aunt would be. Yep, your aunt. So all those alphabets, right? So just learning alphabets, there are tons of signs that you know when you know the hand shape of the alphabet. So uncle, aunt. If you have a C and tap, those can be cousins and they can be your female cousins, male cousins, okay? All right, so let's practice that again. Family, mm -hmm. mother, grandmother, father, grandfather. Sister, sister, brother, daughter, son. Okay, that's it. Um, uncle, remember uncle, aunt. Girl cousins, boy cousins. Good. All right, so I'm gonna sign a short sentence and I want you to type it in the chat what I said, okay? Using some of the vocabulary that we have. We wanna see how much you learn. So I'm gonna sign a short sentence and I want you to type in the chat what you think I said. Y'all ready? All right, so this is my, give me that, my name, my 
find it again. Let me open my chat. Okay, good. I see some people got it. So my aunt's name Good. My aunt's name is Joanne. Look at you. Y'all got whole sentences. You're doing amazing. All right, let's try it again. Let's try it again. Make sure we have enough time. Okay. Um, what did I sign? My. Close. My mom is good. My mom is 10. Of course, that's not possible, but that's what this, this sentence was. So my mom is 10. Good. So in ASL, a lot of those, your verbs get left out. Remember, it's not an exact representation of English. So they may not say my mom is 10. No. All right. So the last thing y'all are doing great. The last thing I wanted to do quickly um, with the time we have left is to show you how to introduce yourself. Okay, so now that you know finger spelling, you can kind of practice spelling your name. I'm going to show you how to introduce yourself. So, the person okay, after Jeff, that, Kawanga, we do have a question as well after that. Okay, all right, so we're going to wrap, wrap this up after I show you this. Um, your, so the deaf person will be asking you your, and they point to you, name, Take those two A cans and park them right on top of each other. Like that. So your name, what? This is a sign for what and watch your face. Like you're asking a question, what? Okay. You kind of hunch your shoulders. All of that adds meaning. So your name is what? So then you would respond either my name and then finger spell your name, or you would just sign your name, okay? All right, so let's try that one more time. Your name, what? All right, let's see, uh, Katrina. Sign your name for me, good. Beautiful. Beautiful sign. That was beautiful. She did it. Her hand wasn't bouncing up and down. All right. Um, let's see. Danielle. Can, oh, we got two Danielles. Danielle W. Can you ask Danielle J what her name is in ASL? And then Danielle, you respond and finger spell your name. Can y'all see each other? Y'all can see each other? Change to gallery view for a second so y'all can all see each other. Okay. Good. And don't forget the eyebrows. Good. All right, Danielle. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Perfect. All right, good. Let's try one more time. You did a great job. Um, Let's see, Kathleen, can you ask Mariah in ASL what her name is? Good. Perfect, y'all are doing amazing. Wonderful, so y'all keep that, remember the things that we talked about, not to be bouncing the hand, remember this is your sign space. So you want to make sure, too, if you're going to be um, interpreting or doing things at church or you want to get more into it in the community, you want to wear solid colors, shirts that are not too busy so that those signs are not distracted by, you know, if you got flowers and all kind of stuff going on or loud colors or whatever. You want to wear solid color things and make it easier to communicate. But y'all did a wonderful job. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you. 
All right, let me check the box. I think she said there were some questions. We do have a question from Lisa, um, Lisa Loy. I may it where you can unmute yourself. So you can unmute yourself for questions right now. But Lisa is first. She's the one that told me she had a question. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you. When hey. you were doing the numbers, you said that we could have our hand like this or like this. Mm -hmm. um, if you opt to do it this way, when you turn your, do you turn your hand around like you would if you started that way? Does that make no. sense? No, no. If you start off, yeah. If you start off this way, just keep it, um, keep your palm forward. Okay. Now, because, and the reason I say that, because we did one through ten, but when you get to the number eleven, then you would turn your hand around and wiggle. So just remember, like I said, those are variations. Either way is okay. It just depends on where you are in the USA how they sign those different things, but they're all okay. But there's actually some, um, some of the signs are actually different. I think the way we sign birthday um, in North part of the United States, they have a completely different sign. Some of those are local. So just like we kind of have, if we say land yap, everybody in Louisiana knows what that means. Sometimes you leave here, they have no idea, right? So it's a local type of sign. It's the same thing with ASL. Some of our signs are a little different. So even some of the colors like that gray is one of those and um, birthday. I've noticed there's different ways that they sign it. Okay, but that, yeah, that's a great question. So yeah, you just keep your palm the same way because when you get to 11 through 20, you're gonna have to turn it around and wiggle them. How long have you been sign languaging? I started in high school. Um, I had a fabulous teacher that just opened up languages to me when I was in high school and I just fell in love. I mean, I, after I took her class, I just studied whatever I could get my hands on, whether it was French. Um, I think I took German in high school, Greek, Swahili, whatever I could learn, I was learning. I just love languages. But it started with, um, with high school. And then um, I studied uh, communication disorders that I wanted to go into that, mm -hmm. learning about speech and speech issues and problems, loved the classes, did the practicum, absolutely hated it. Hated everything about it. The paperwork, just hated it. So I actually left, went to New Orleans to study deaf education. And I was thinking I was gonna work like in a deaf school or something like that. Ended up in special ed, got moved, Hurricane Katrina, all kind of issues. But I still use it now with my kids who are nonverbal. So yeah, but I love languages, any kind of language. I can say I love you and how at least find a bathroom in 10 different places. <laughs> Two, <laughs> different different <laughs> Two different questions from the chat. One is, is there a sign for the color indigo? And some of those like that, you would just finger spell it. You could finger spell it because indigo is pretty, it's like in between blue and purplish, right? So you could finger spell it. If you want it to be that specific, yeah, finger spelling is your friend. And then that's the other thing. If there's some signs you don't know yet and you're talking with a deaf person, don't be afraid to finger spell it and they'll give you the sign. They'll give you the sign for it. And last question we can take for time is if they wanted to sign up with you for like a one-to-one -one session or, you know, learn, how do they contact you to pay for a one-to-one -one session with you? I would say, hey, if you're going to spend your money, find somebody that's much better than me. <laughs> um, I don't really think you have to, if you're just starting, I don't really think you have to spend um, money. One of the resources that I, I gave you from Gallaudet University, they have an amazing free ASL program that actually you can see yourself on camera. So if you're just starting, I wouldn't, I wouldn't pay for that. I mean, not to, you know, downplay myself, but yeah, I wouldn't pay for that. ASL Pro, I think, is the way to go. And she's going to put that in the, the bit.ly link. So you'll have all that. But yeah, if you're just wanting to practice, that's I think that's the way to go. They have all kind of free classes. And I have um, our free information, even on YouTube, not well, YouTube, but also Facebook. Uh, I think there's a few people that I follow on Facebook. If you're just, you know, wanting people to practice with or to meet up, because that's the thing to really learn. You need somebody to practice so you can see their signs. It's real easy to, for you to do it, but to read it when someone else is signing to you is a little more challenging. In every language, it's the same. So I would say start there first. But yeah, for sure, somebody who's deaf, I would that would be my, my first person to go to for extra help to really learn, because that way you'll get more of the culture, you know, 
all of that. But thank you. Thank y'all for sharing your Saturday with me. Y'all did amazing. Yeah. Thank you. We want to say a huge thank you to you.